thank you once again. Uh, a review of uh, methods to specify information requirements in digital construction projects. Exactly, thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Arthur Tomczak and today I represent uh, Norwegian University of Science and Technologies. And I will present to you a joint work on the review of methods to specify information requirements in digital construction projects. Uh, I will just take this one. So uh, today we already heard about uh, building information modeling and when we talk about BIM it's important to manage the information about buildings and uh, this presentation is not about what information we are requiring requiring or what should we require on projects but how are we doing this so when I say information requirement I mean the specification what when how and for whom information is to be produced. This is a methodology that we adopted in our research. So we started with analysis of use cases from the use case management system of Building Smart, as well as analysis of existing ISO and SAN standards. And we also did a literature review to see how literature covers existing standards. And then in the expert discussions, we try to define the evaluation criteria for those methods and also to do the actual evaluation of those methods and comparison. OK, here you can see a list of the uh, methods that we have found and seven of them are standardized and there are also some that are not standardized, such as, for example, very popular in the industry text based or spreadsheet documents that we often see on projects as well as some proprietary and bespoke software solutions or open source scripts that allow to do similar tasks and on the right hand side uh, we try to uh, show the literature uh, overlap and we discovered that a lot of methods are not included in the existing literature and if they are, there is very little overlap. So only two papers were describing as many as three methods at the same time, and none of them covered them in the top in the uh, focusing on the information requirements. Okay, to give you a better understanding of what I'm talking about, here is uh, one of the examples. So in the Norwegian uh, Statsbik requirements, there is a requirement that says that all walls need uh, information if they are load bearing or not. So this is very simple to say with a sentence, but we have different ways to describe it in a digital software, in a digital solutions. So uh, we can have it in a plain text explanation, we can have it as a table, or we can have it in a more advanced uh, XML form, as you can see here. Okay. And here are the criteria that we have identified. I will try to describe uh, quickly most of them. So first we need to know uh, to what elements the requirement applies to. So for example, the requirement could apply to all the columns at this floor. Uh, then we can uh, require how the information should be provided. So for example, uh, what should be the data type of the information, uh, what's the units of measure, some description, maybe a reference to a common definition. Uh, after we have this, we can also constrain the value. So for example, we can say that the number should be within a certain range or that the value should follow a certain pattern. Next, we can also require uh, for some elements to be present in the model. So that at least, for example, one element should exist or that all of the elements that match the criteria should fulfill the requirement. We can also ask for some additional documents like drawings or schedules. We can also uh, ask element to be within a certain uh, model hierarchy structure. Some requirements also were interested in the geometry. So we identified two types of geometry. So how is the geometry represented and to what detail? Then Many of the use cases, they also wanted to have some metadata. So uh, those are used to, to provide the context of the information requirement. So for example, 
who sh should be responsible for doing this requirement? If so, for checking it, who should deliver this information and for what purpose and when? We have also found some other aspects that are important uh, to evaluate the standards, such as the expressiveness. So what's the breadth of ideas that could be described with this requirement? Uh, dependency on shared uh, semantic schemas or the technology that is available. And at the end, we have the governance. So which organization governs this method? And this is not uh, easy to represent in a graphical form, but we tried to do so. Here we can see a table that shows the relative capabilities of most of the methods, not all of them. As some of the methods were difficult to evaluate because they come in different shapes and forms, such as the textual document or proprietary software. And uh, here you can see that uh, here you can see that uh, uh, most of the methods they allow to uh, specify uh, that, uh, sorry, uh, specify in what uh, form should the information be provided. And we go into details in the paper if you're interested uh, on certain differences between those methods. I must also say that it wasn't uh, easy to uh, evaluate all of the methods as they evolve as we speak. So some of the standards, they are still under development and they are prone to change in the near future. And to give you some, uh, some interesting uh, comparisons. So for example, uh, all of the methods we, we found that are uh, possible to be uh, machine readable, so we can parse them but not all of them we consider machine interpretable so that the machine can check if the requirement is fulfilled. And uh, those that we found best for machine uh, validation uh, are IDS and uh, linked data. So uh, you can see it represented with black dots. And we also found partial uh, capability for such validation in MVD and data dictionaries. And uh, for example, uh, to ask for additional documents or drawings, uh, we can only do this with IDM and level of information needs. If we are interested in geometry, we also have this capability in IDM and level of information needs, as well as in MVD and linked data. But linked data in this comparison is a bit unfair to compare because it is tightly linked to this certain type of data representation, which is a graph database. Okay, and when it comes to metadata, the best standards to uh, give this context were IDM and the level of information needs. And here are the other aspects that I have mentioned. So those we couldn't represent in a graphic form, so we decided to group those methods to categories. And I must also say that it's not that there is a better and worse category because all of them, they have their own advantages. So for example, when we look at the expressiveness, uh, the fact that textual documents are sort of uh, free to express any ideas, it, it could be an advantage. It gives us more flexibility, but also it's more difficult to validate such requirements. So when we look at very strict uh, standards such as MVD or IFC property templates, it's uh, there's not many things that we can uh, specify, but also uh, you must be uh, sorry. You, you can be uh, curious why some of the methods they fall within uh, into few categories. For example, MVD is both free and strict, and this is because when we analyze the use cases, we saw that even though certain technologies they allow to be very specific about how the logic to validate requirement should be uh, written, often people still use plain text explanation of requirements so they they don't often use the full capability of uh, methodology uh, for example when we uh, talk about semantic dependency of the standards uh, some of the methods they define meaning internally or they reference to other standards and some of them they rely on common industry uh, schema such as ifc and this also can be uh, advantage or a burden. So for example, in the case that I was presenting with walls, uh, 
having uh, having this requirement in MVD uh, lead it to having a lot of similar requirements because each IFC version had to be defined in a different MVD file. Okay. To summarize, there are many standards for requiring requiring information in building information modeling, and some of them overlap. And in general, they all have their intended purpose and should be uh, chosen wisely, let's say. So for example, text doc documents are very common legal form to specify contractual requirements, and they are quite hard to automatically validate if they don't follow a certain structure. Uh, data dictionaries and product data templates or data templates, they are best fit for specifying widely shared properties, for example, about products. And uh, level of information need is more uh, fit for project specific requirements because it allows to integrate with contractual documents uh, very well. Uh, IDM uh, is very good for purpose specific requirements, for example, for uh, precast uh, concrete uh, manufacturers, how they should prepare the information and when this information should be uh, implemented in the workflow. And for example, MVD allows to be, uh, uh, MVD is very good when it comes to validation, but its main purpose, uh, it was intended to be for software certification. So it's very complex and hard to implement in the software. Uh, and IDS, so I, information delivery specific, specification is a bit easier than MVD, and it's very good for validation of alphanumeric requirements, but it doesn't allow to validate anything about geometry, and it only uh, can ask about properties from IFC uh, schema. Non-standardized methods, they are very good when we want to be flexible with, with our requirements, and we want to be uh, to adapt to project needs uh, best, but since they are not standardized, they are also uh, less repetitive, so it's harder to have agreement with other companies as well. Uh, okay, thank you very much for this. I, I recommend reading paper if you're interested in details about the comparison, but thank you.